Stop it, sit down, sit down, sit down. Here's a good story. Once upon a time, there were two children who lived on the edge of a great forest with their father, a poor woodcutter, and their stepmother. And the children's names were Hansel and Gretel. But no matter how hard the woodcutter worked, there was never quite enough food to go around. And then, as if to make matters worse, a famine fell on the land. And one night, as they lay in bed, the stepmother turned to the father with the candlelight dancing in her pinched grey eyes. Listen, my dear, she said, we must do something. With no food, but, uh, <laughs> at least not enough for the four of us. We must get rid of Hansel and Gretel. But my dear, the father replied, we can't do that. Not to our own children, can we? It's either them or us, <laughs> my love, <laughs> she said. Listen, tomorrow we'll take them into the forest, right? We'll pretend that we have to collect firewood. <laughs> but we'll leave them there and we'll, we'll run off. <laughs> and they'll never find their way home. <laughs> well, the father wasn't happy. No, 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 he shook his head and he argued. But she was too strong for him. And in the end, he sank back under the bedclothes and agreed. Oh, well, all right then. Oh. Now, Hansel had been too hungry to sleep that night, and he'd overheard everything that had been said. As soon as he was sure that his two parents were asleep, and the way his stepmother snored, that wasn't too hard to tell. <laughs> Horrible noise. He slipped out of the house, and in the light of a full moon, he collected as many pebbles as he could carry, each one glittering like a silver coin, and he filled his pockets with them, ready for the next day. The next day came, and off they all went. And as they walked, Hansel secretly dropped the pebbles on the ground to leave a trail behind him. Lots of tiny pebbles slipped silently onto the forest floor. Finally, they came to a small clearing, and their father built a bonfire to keep them all warm. Then the stepmother put an arm round each of the children, smiled sweetly, <laughs> and said, well, why don't you two dear children just sit down here and have a rest by the fire, you know? No, 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 no. Don't even offer to help. <laughs> you just keep nice and warm by the fire. <laughs> don't worry, we'll just go and get some wood. We won't be long. <laughs> OK? Um, cheerio. <laughs> and with that, the wicked stepmother tore off at 50 miles an hour, dragging the father with her. And the children were lost and alone in the wood. But. As soon as the moon had risen, the scattered pebbles shone like silver lights, and Hansel and Gretel followed them all the way home. Well, the stepmother was astonished. Hansel! Gretel! You're home! I, I mean, I mean, uh, you're home! <laughs> Where have you been? Worrying us to death! Butter, butter, butter! Punch, poke, punch! Smack, smack, butter, 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 punch, 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 etc., etc., for two whole hours. Anyway, a few weeks later, she decided to try again. Lying in bed, she forced her husband to agree to leave the children in the forest one more time. But once again, Hansel overheard them talking, and so was ready with a plan. The next day, off they went. This time, as they made their way into the wood, Hansel scattered crumbs from a piece of bread he had saved from breakfast on the ground to make a path back. Well, at the first opportunity, the stepmother... <laughs> took off like a rocket and Hansel sat down with Gretel and waited for the moon to rise. But this time, things didn't work out as he had hoped. For the birds that lived in the wood had swooped down and eaten the crumbs. And this time, the children were well and truly lost. Whichever way they turned, the forest seemed to block their way. Great briars and thistles sprang up like a wall. Muddy bogs and, and rivers bubbled hungrily in the ground. Pits and quarries opened up to pull them in. And all around them they heard strange sounds, the flap of wing and the beat of claw and the hiss and snarl of strange invisible things. Faster and faster they pushed their way forward through stinging nettles and branches until suddenly they burst through into a clearing and saw the most extraordinary house they'd ever seen. It 
was made of gingerbread. It had a, a candy-coated doorknob, sugar glass windows, licorice doorbells, a chocolate roof with turrets topped with an ice cream sauce. Dear, le, chasse. And just right for two lost hungry children. Well, Hansel tore off a piece of the roof and Gretel whipped away a big chunk of wall. And both of them were eating away when a soft, slimy voice came from inside. Guzzle, gobble, nibble, gnaw. Who's that eating at my door? Eh? There was a movement and an old woman came out, dressed in rags, with sagging skin, yellow teeth and eyes like wrinkled prunes. Her legs were all bent and twisted like a spider that someone had accidentally stepped on, or more likely deliberately stamped on. Just looking at her made you feel horribly sick, especially after all those sweets. She was so short-sighted that she had to come right up, right up two inches away from the children before she could see who it was. But when she saw Hansel and Gretel, her face broke into a smile. Why, it's two delicious, um, I mean, um, delightful <laughs> little children, <laughs> she said. Why don't you come inside my little house? You know, no, don't be afraid. <laughs> I'd love to have you both for dinner. <laughs> the old woman, of course, was a witch. And she had deliberately built a house out of chocolates and sweets simply to attract children. Because children were her favourite food. And sure enough, as soon as they were inside the house, she seized hold of Hansel and threw him into an iron cage and locked the door. <laughs> then she turned on Gretel. And now, my precious, <laughs> you can work for me. Get in the kitchen and cook something scrumptious for your brother, because I want him to get nice and fat. And when he's fat enough, I'm going to, let me see, uh, yeah, braised boy with baked beans. Oh, yeah, that's my favourite. <laughs> it is, you know, it's lovely. Oh, it's lovely. And off she went, <laughs> sniggering and giggling and dribbling at the thought of the meal to come. And so, every day for the next six weeks, Gretel was forced to cook lots of delicious things for her brother, while she was given nothing to eat but crab shells. And every morning, the old witch would hobble over to the cage and say, Now then, little Hansel, stick out a finger and let me feel how plump you have become. <laughs> Where is it? Where is it? But Hansel had realised how short-sighted the old witch was. And so every morning, instead of sticking out his finger, he stuck out an old chicken bone. <laughs> That's strange. Don't seem to be able to fatten him up at all. He's as thin as ever. <laughs> oh. And eventually, she could wait no longer. Oh, pfft. Get the oven ready, Gretel, she said. There seems to be no way at all of fattening up your brother, so I'll just have to eat him the way he is. But we'll have to make some bread first. He's so thin, I'll have to make him into sandwiches. <laughs> just my luck. Uh, and then she put a horrible, fake, wobbly smile on her face and came limping over to Gretel. Now get in the oven, would you, Gretel, my dear? I just want you to tell me if it's hot enough for the bread. <laughs> Well, by now, Gretel knew the witch pretty well, and she guessed that the old woman planned to cook her too. She thought quickly. Uh, well, I'd love to get in the oven for you, darling witch, said Gretel cleverly, but I'm afraid I can't. <laughs> the door's too small. Too small? The witch cackled. It's not too small. Uh, yeah, yes, it is. <laughs> no, it's not. It's, it's oh, blimey, look, I'll show you, I'll do it myself. And the ghastly old woman put her head and shoulders into the oven to prove her point. Well, that was just what Gretel had been waiting for. She drew back her foot and kicked the old woman right into the oven, then slammed the door, clickety-click, and threw it away. And that was the end of her. Fantastic. After that, Gretel let her brother out of the cage and after the two of them had fallen into each other's arms, they searched the gingerbread house and found a box full of diamonds and pearls and also an up-to-date map of the wood which showed them how to get out. And soon they arrived safely home. Phew. Their father was overjoyed to see them, for he'd not slept one single night after he'd agreed to abandon them. And as for their stepmother, it turned out she had slipped on a banana skin and fallen down the well and that had been the end of her. Great. Hansel and Gretel showed their father the jewels that they had found and, well, I don't need to say how the story ends, do I? Happily ever after, except for the witch and the stepmother. But who cares about them? I don't. <laughs> well, are we going somewhere or what? What's happening? <sighs> Chair, right? 
Well, come on, I can't hang around here all day. Let's go somewhere and have some lunch or something. Oh, you're trying to make me feel sick. Oh, how funny.